Hey everyone, this is Louis 7 and today I'm streaming the Lord of the Rings online and uh, plan to start the Cloven Gap Zone is what I am doing today. I also see my inventory is a little bit of a mess and I'm just reminded that I have not gotten the Subscriber Town services, so I will go ahead and do that to start things off as we get settled in. And yeah, it looks like I have a lot of inventory management I need to do slash essence box management. Those are filling up quite a bit of space. And one thing I could also look into doing actually at the start of the stream that I just thought of is to manage my craft and carry all because all the stuff in my inventory actually have a full craft and carry all. So perhaps I could look into seeing what I can do about this because I have a lot of random stuff and a lot of low level stuff that I could ideally transition out of here into my vault and then have whatever's in my inventory like the newer stuff I'm getting actually go into the crafting carryall. I'd, I'd be really scared how this character would look without the carryall right now. Could actually use a ideally for this character I could use a second crafting carryall. I don't know if there's a consumable carryall, but that would be nice. A gear carryall would be really nice as well. An essence box. There might actually be an essence and tracery carryall. But yeah. Luida needs all the carryalls, probably. Yeah, Lotra really does. With all the stuff you get and all the stuff that sometimes feels like you need in your inventory, it really does make you organize. That is very true, Harvain. Also, somebody who has Naz in chat and Spice Bomb for their character, they sent me some food, so I am happy with that because it is better than my old level 121 and 106 food is what I had. I think I went through everything else I had at the previous level cap. Okay, so Heritage Runes. A uh, random necklace that doesn't disenchant into anything. Just double checking that I don't want this. Yeah, I don't think I want that necklace. Uh, Gundabad potions I will keep. Can actually manually lock some things, probably. Maybe. Wonder if any of these heritage runes are ones that will stack now. Ah, they are. All the 405 k ones should stack. I'm guessing these are actually two different sizes. Okay. Uh, definitely want to lock the new food. I can probably safely get rid of the old food. I hate to do that, but the 106 food especially. Maybe I can keep the 121 food. If I'm really pressed for a single inventory space, I'll do that. To get rid of some other things can remove that tracery. If I had thought about it, I could have done some of this organization before the stream started, but also I feel like it could potentially be helpful for some people to see the process of it. Maybe. Not that I'm the best at organizing. Which I feel like is clearly the case. So I see I have some random cosmetics that I think I put here. I have tons of heritage runes in my vault, so if I were to get rid of things in my crafting carryall and move them to my vault, I might have to take out a lot of these heritage runes, which will ideally stack with a lot of what I already have. So if I take all these out, actually quite a few of them are already stacking, so that's like almost free withdrawals. And then here are a few, a good set here that look like they will not stack. I was also thinking at level 140 I might finally use this black steel key I've had. I think that's one of the four that you get from creating a character at least that I get from I think the yearly gift boxes. Eventually I'll be able to use these all. I don't know if I will have to use all of these when the reward track comes out like how much one season of that will take. I feel glad crafting components Claim several Ethel Glad crafting components. I want to just claim A. Hmm. A uh, bunch of legendary item things. I could actually disenchant these starlight crystals since you can do that now and they fix their level range. I haven't done this to actually know what exactly happens. I think you have to disenchant. Oh, it actually does the full stack. 
Two enhancement runes each, so yeah, I should have gotten 12. Now these won't stack for... Oh, those are still level 86. Wait, they're 86, but they have an enhancement limit of 430. That's a little bit weird. Six bound enhancement runes. Oh, those are bound to account. Well, these are bound to Louis, and I actually have zero use for them, unfortunately. Uh, the bound to account ones I can maybe send to an alt at some point. But anyway, got those two things taken care of, and I got two stacks of things anyway. Uh, rare crafting component, or not rare, the universal. Can put that in. So all this... All of these crafting items... Ooh, this thing is messy. So I have wood and hides up here. I have wood and hides slash leathers down here. Seems to be no organization between the two. I uh, have more purple stuff. Also, why do I have spices in here? Spices and soil don't need any of those. Yeah, most of the new LI stuff, if not all of it, is bound to account, but then randomly. I guess I disenchanted some bound to character starlight crystals is how that happened. Okay, so I got rid of the stuff. Well treated doomful, that is. I guess I'll keep that. See, when I have single stacks of things like this, I'm really tempted to destroy them, but I really hate destroying stuff. Like, that's one reason I have so many things. I just never want to destroy anything. I do have some shield spikes. I guess westernness is better than nothing. Maybe for some group content, I can keep those in my inventory. I also have four bound sturdy steel keys somehow. I don't know how I got four steel keys and one black steel key, but okay. Bunch of random maps. I also have some cosmetics here. I have three crystals of remembrance. Oh, you can actually disenchant those. I did not know that. Uh, do I want that? I probably want to save that for when I like really want ancient scripts, but by that point, I'll probably forget about it. Have some random runes. More rare crafting components. These are actually, I could use these for Gunabad probably. Let me see what this has. Yeah, I could get five sunstone shards out of that. I feel like if there's ever a use for it, it's going to be sunstone shards, so might as well go ahead and use them. It's better than it sitting in my vault for years and years unopened. Okay, other things I can do. Now that I have tons of spaces, tons of space, rather. I wish I had spaces, plural. I can put some stuff in there. Also, all these essence boxes. I could go ahead and pick out essences, but the problem is I don't exactly know what I want. I'd probably want a few physical mastery ones and critical rating ones, potentially even finesse. Yeah, there's finesse. Uh, if vitality were a thing, of course, that would be on the list, but it is not. So I guess my question is, out of all these chests, where would I want to put it? Chest 8? I can just start stacking these in my vault as well to free up some space. And then I have level 140 armor. I might as well put that in there just to, again, free up space. So as far as crafting carry-all stuff goes, I have a random myth of lead hide. I think that is my only one. Maybe I could do chest four as more rare crafting stuff. Where did my carry all go? I wonder why the Gundabad hides weren't auto gathering. But yeah, since I am no longer working on the. Uh, how do I get rid of it? There we go. Oh, you can double click. That is a lot more convenient. But since I'm no longer working on the guild crafting, I can. There we go. I have to actually double click the icon. But since I am working on the guild crafting, not working on the guild crafting, rather, I can get rid of all the stuff I had in here for guild crafting, which was quite a bit in this carry all was ded dedicated to working on the guild crafting. So hopefully I have enough space for some of this stuff. Don't really know where to put it. 
I feel like chest two is a little bit more hide oriented. So I will go ahead and just put all that in there. Now, unfortunately, it does look like I will run out of space and things that I had over 500 of will be split into two stacks and all that sort of stuff. But here we go. This is why Louis didn't need a second crafting carry-all, which I actually thought I had one on the server, but if I did, I cannot find it at all. Unless this crafting carry-all was it, but I don't think it was. I thought this was an unrelated thing. But yeah, that should have freed up some space, at least in the carry-all. No, I've got, got two whole rows of inventory space. Wow. That actually is a lot for this character lately. And yeah, that's what I've been thinking about doing, actually dedicating one of my many alts on the server to not only heritage runes, but things like virtue XP, things that I save up, and even maybe enhancement runes, essences. A lot of these old consumables I might be able to get rid of, like the Air and Mithrin power potions. Or, yeah. I think I would be fine selling those. I'm working on my second stack of Gundabad health potions so let me try first of all locking all these because i definitely don't want to sell them i'm going to sell those bound enhancement runes and locking these three things that thing there we go i really do need to take the time at some point soonish to actually make dedicate an alt basically to storage okay don't want to boot up an instance i want to quest i'm actually curious how many loots i have i can do the instance two more times on tier one uh yes this is actually the same shirt from yesterday Sometimes, that's just how it goes. Yes, I'm traveling back to Gunabad, that's right. It'll only take me a few minutes. I temporarily have a little stool right here next to my chair, but it should be convenient for the cat so she doesn't have to lay in front of my keyboard. So Harvey and he said heritage runes also have the minimum use level now, which is true. It's a little bit weird to get used to because even in the old days at like level 60, you could get a huge heritage rune that would now require level 140 from... I was about to say disenchanting, from deconstructing a high level like third, second, first stage LI. Uh, do I have any task items? I do not. I'll have to wait for a task. Now, cat's going after a string. Okay, so the zone I am questing in is Cloven Gap, but I don't think I actually have a stable master there. I have Matagard, Deep's Crave, Stone Jaws, Carbronac, Matagard, Matagard. Carbronac and Glooming Turn. So I did not actually get... I wonder why I didn't get the Southern Cloven Gap. I think I was right at that camp with a Stable Master, but maybe not. Anyway, it's just a little bit of extra travel in the Glooming Turn zones. Nice anyway. Ah, small camp with no stable master. I like that. It looks like a wolf, but maybe it's intended to be a dog. I can see the zone I need to go to just right up there. The problem with UI less traveling is I can't look at stuff while traveling. I 
Uh, so to continue with your message, Harvain, I actually forgot about that. So keeping heritage runes until your character is at, so X character is at X level, and then you'll have them ready for the reward track system down the road. Yeah, for me, I feel like ideally I could actually put them in my shared storage. So whatever level character can use whatever is highest available for them. But I actually wonder, so it looks like 85 is 31,000, but 27,000 is level 45. That's kind of a crazy jump, crazy jump in level. But that's probably because the LI system goes from like, it actually does go from 45 to 85, then 86. There's the new tracery level range and kind of going on from there. We can look at this. I'm guessing actually 100 is the next and then maybe 115. 115 is the next of what I have, then 120, then 130, then 140, somewhere. There, yeah, 140 are the unusable ones. How am I doing on deeds? Now that we've already gone through basically the whole glooming turn zone, I can check how I'm doing on deeds. Romanian. Crystal Hunter. There are a bunch of rare crystals. I thought these might have all been inside the Pit of Stone Jaws zone, but I'm not 100% sure. Now, discovering Cloven Gap, working on that zone. Actually, Deep Scrape, I still need to. Oh, that's why I need to do the rare Gundabad chests and treasures. That makes more sense. I'm definitely looking forward to more details on the reward track. So this, I don't think it's the camp I was at. There's Bozy. He's the guy in the thumbnail for anybody curious. Uh, there's the little camp that I was at. But I should probably track nearby quests. I still have all the missions tracked. I know I have the, uh, what's it called? the allegiance to work on, but I need a break from that. Uh, so my quests are actually on the opposite side. I was going to get the stable master, but maybe I can circle around and do that. Do some quests along the way. So defeat org, search for the old market. Uh, another quest to defeat orgs and then collect defeat crystal encrusted org so a lot of org defeating makes sense with all the org howling we heard earlier seems natural the quest would have me deal with some of them and i only hit one with resounding challenge Market. I was going to check the map. I have a lot of debuffs and I cannot see where my finger is. I thought about trying to find something to more permanently actually put to my side here for the cat, but that has not happened. Maybe in the future I'm thinking uh, some potential long term changes to my desk depending on how some things go the next half year or so. And if I do make adjustments to my setup here, I can maybe work that in for her and the other one. Okay, so what did I need? The old market or something? Map the gap. There's also something I need over here. Yeah, I have to investigate a bunch of things for the book quest. This is probably, well, there's a crystal encrusted thing, but this is probably for the book quest. I would guess one of the things I need to investigate. I also need to collect corrupted crystals, so maybe there is that. Yeah, the crystal, what was it called? Crystal encrusted. Words are neat. 
it's almost hard to think of crystals being like corruptions, but I think that's how it's kind of meant to be, that the crystals are somehow corrupting the wargs, but I may be way wrong on that, way off on that. But that's kind of the idea I get, is that they are corrupting the enemies. It's just kind of weird. Am I going to have to use Never Surrender because of these dots? My debuff remover can only handle so much, and I don't have any of the potions, which I believe they require crafting, and I at least have not seen any with Gundabad, but that's probably just me missing them. So yeah, being very proactive with removing the debuff seems like it'll be a good idea with these wargs. As in using my debuff remover on cooldown, probably. All right, moving on, I believe it is time to head north. First, we'll get this crystal. That's weird, it didn't come up with like a progress thing, collected so many out of so many. But I think it counted. I collected two corrupted crystals and there's the third one. Hello? Ariad? Arrowed? Uh, you said that you just leveled 15, so I believe at level 15 you can unlock housing, and that is what you're asking what my favorite free housing area is. Ooh. I used to have a house in the elf one that I really liked, the elf neighborhood, which I definitely don't dislike. It'd probably be my personal favorite would be the elf one. Uh, the Thorns one, I am not a big fan of. And then the Shire one is not too bad to me either. A Hobbit house. A lot of people like Hobbit houses and such. But yeah, that one's not too bad to me. And the Race of Man one I have found to be relatively boring. I think it's the one I've had actually the least experience dealing with. I hardly even remember what anything there looks like. Oops. Uh, Boogie Bear, the game with the free quest pack is not nearly as paywalled as it would be without the free quest pack, but there are a lot of things that you might run into that seem like they would either be good to purchase or the game just throws in your face. It's one of the not so great parts of the game, in my opinion. And I think it's something they are looking at improving in the next year or so, hopefully. It actually is improved, but yeah, besides the free quest packs, what you would mainly need is all the old expansions and the first five, I believe, you can get for 99 Lotro points for about one more week. More like nine days, but a little over a week is how long you have left on that, which is through November 30th. And then after that, you would need the how many expansion packs did I say? I think Mordor is actually in the 99 point sale, but maybe somebody else can confirm on that because I forget exactly if it was or was not included. But anyway, after that you would need Menace Morgul, which is potentially actually skippable. skippable. You might be able to get away without doing Menace Morgul buying that. And War of Three Peaks, you can mostly pass at this point, unless you're interested in it, but it's not like a paywall type thing that's really necessary. And then Gunabad is the latest expansion, which if you were to catch up while this is still the level cap expansion, then it would be a bit necessary. But otherwise, there's more quality of life, just convenience type things that are not really necessary, and they might actually be changed in the future. One of the uh, more popular ones is the gold cap, Removal and I think the premium wallet. I'm less sure on the premium wallet, but I believe there are at least intentions to remove the gold cap or lessen the strain of that for free to play players. Let's see, I still need to defeat some crystal encrusted wargs. I still have to go west for map the gap. 
which I have to go up for, which is probably right at this org. So the first six expansions that will include through Mordor then, which the first six expansions would be 50 to 60 with Moria, 60 to 65 with Mirkwood, uh, 65 to 75 with Isengard, 75 to 85 with Riders of Rohan, and then what was I at? 85 to 95 with Helm's Deep. And then 95 to 105 is covered with quest packs, and that takes you up to Mordor, which is 105 to 115. Then randomly 115 to 120 is quest packs. And then the Menace Morgul expansions, 120 to 130. But I believe the if you have Mordor, you will have access to the Black Book of Mordor, and you could potentially squeeze out if you do missions or other things along the way. You might be able to squeeze out all the levels you need from Menace Morgul, which is 120 to 130, by doing the Black Book of Mordor and ignoring the zone quest, which you want to be able to do. And then there's a lot of level 130 content, which you could start even at level 125. Now it would be tough, but it would be possible. And then, yeah, after that, it would be good to bad. I guess it doesn't help when you use your debuff removal, but then just quickly use another ability and it doesn't ever go off. And the hornets are bleeding me. I guess they're just giving me a sense of what it feels like to fight a warden with all the bleeds. Not that I'm actually using that many. These are more light dots. Just bleeding for light damage instead of common damage, really. Somehow I didn't expect wasps to be an issue in this zone, but here we are. It's another thing that reminds me of Bales of Anduin, although that was more bees, I feel like that I associate with Veils of Anduin because of the Bayorning and Bayorning lands. But yeah, the other thing that's reminded me of Veils of Anduin, I think it was, is just some of the bushes and vegetation, actually. There should be plenty more nests here. Maybe they're in the west. And yeah, there are uh, lots of debuffs and bleeds here. I don't actually have to kill the firefly, except I do for five quests. I meant didn't have to kill it because it's a neutral mob, but yes, for the quest I do. Do not underestimate wasps. Well, it looks like this game is playing true to that. Definitely want to recommend underestimating these things with all their debuffs. Use resolution to make sure my health stays up. Wow, they even have some ground puddle thing. Alright then. But yes, here are a lot of the nests. Gundabad is not free for VIP. It is a full expansion pack that you will have to buy. You will have to buy if you want to play the content, that is. You could always choose to not buy it and not play it, I suppose. I have heard the Legacy of Durin, though, is free, even if you haven't bought Gundabad. I don't know if that's an issue that is going to be fixed or if it is intended. I could see it being intended because the Legacy of Durin started in quest packs with 
let's see, what have been what would have been the first one? I think it was during Wells of Lang Flood time that they added the first couple chapters and then War of Three Peaks brought the next two chapters and then we had Gunabad, which has brought the next like six chapters after that or something. Or I will just deal with the enemies. I know this might be a little bit dangerous AFWing so many given the presence of leads, but Sometimes you have to live dangerously. Oh, yikes. Okay, not that dangerously. I almost got the resolution off. Not that that would have saved me, but I almost got it off. And there are lots of them here. Okay, I've never surrender up. I have resolution about to go off. That'll be a big kill. Hobbit houses are cozy. That is true. I think that's one of the things I like about them. They do have a nice cozy feel which seems thematic towards hobbits. If only I was a little bit better about that pull, I think I could have managed it. If I had never surrender up and got to my potion quicker instead of trying to just get resolution off, I could have lived through that. But of course that is not what happened. Here, I'm trying to use resolution. Actually, on three mobs, I thought I only had one there. Hey, here's a rare Mordor. Not oh, Mordor. I'm still having that issue, apparently. A rare Gundabad chest. There's never a surrender that triggered. It's nice when never surrender works. I mean, it works when it doesn't not work. Is he yet? Deed bestowed. Okay, rare treasure chest in Cloven Gap. Sunstone shards. I don't think those chests were giving me sunstone shards at first, but now most of them are. One more wasp nest. Making good progress on the quest, at least. I mean, I... Um, I thought I searched the old market. We're at map. Map the gap. I'm like right next to it. I wonder if I have to actually interact with an item. That is always possible. Here's an ancient jar that is floating. And is there a wasp slayer deed? That would be kind of neat. Does not appear that there is. So outside, I just need some, I actually need to investigate the old vineyard, which is, actually there's a buzzing quest right here. Oh, it's ready for turn in. There's a dwarf. There he is. He is actually effectively hiding because I could not see him at first. If Gunvald sent you, you have my trust too. Uh, find and defeat the Warg. There are lots of Wargs. Can I just, like, defeat a random one and say I defeated the Warg? Is it this one? Oh, that's a Hornet. Okay, so Book Quest. Book Quest has me up in the north and in the east, so I think I am safe to continue on. And then the defeat the warg that is going to be up here, it looks like. There is still some crystal encrusted wargs. I hope I'm not defeating this warg. That's an extra pretty one. The warg can actually talk to me. That is weird. Apparently there are some cub snatchers I need to defeat. I'm guessing those are orcs, but we will see. No, they're actually Ingmar. I thought it would be a little bit weird that they would be orcs, but just because I th thought I saw some orcs leading up to here. I don't know what the deal is with these guys pathing.
Ooh, little cubs. I would really like a Crystal Ward cub as a cosmetic pet now. There we go. Alright. Sounds like they will just be leaving Cloven Gap soon. Not before I get a picture with them. Oh. I'm not sure I actually needed to go down, but I don't think there's a way right back up, so... Uh, let's try to hit something that will break my fall. Wow, I can't believe I actually landed on this. That's pretty neat. Well, I have a... I probably could have jumped quicker and avoided that second injury. But anyway, I have the book quest up to the northwest, and I think I can go up right here. So Bleeds... I think some people refer to bleeds as a general dot term in Lotro, but bleeds are a specific type of damage over time ability, and there are other ones that are technically not really bleeds, but I do think some people refer to all dots as just generically as bleeds. Typically bleeds are going to be wounds, and they'll have the red border on their icon, and they will also typically do weapon type damage or i'll often be common damage but i think for me it would be valerian damage and i think sometimes they specify like in the warden thing you can get bleed damage used to be able to maybe they adjusted it to just dot damage at some point i think i think they actually did have a change where it was just dot to damage instead of bleed damage. Maybe. No, up here. Here's the bleed damage. So yeah, that's specifically bleeds and that. Oh, there is a... I'm trying to think what that is. A leopard, maybe? Yeah, leopard. All right, searching for a crystal encrusted warg, and this is actually Ingmar in presence, I believe. Based on the mini map, this is Ingmar in presence, at least. But I saw a crystal encrusted warg, so I want to, for some reason, pull this whole camp and deal with that. Yeah, get my morale taps going and circle around a little bit, and then I should be mostly safe. I'll even be extra safe. Use resolution while I'm at full health and put it in battle memory. I assume I will get quests to come back here. Like, to rescue that Ingmarm deserter and the such. Oh, there's another warg. Just to make sure I get all the wargs in case I don't run into another one along the way. I'll go ahead and get this one. But yeah, this looks like it'll be a great place to potentially finish my Angmorm Slayer D, depending on how things go. That guy's got pretty neat heavy armor. Is it a guardian? Looks like a guardian. That last animation really looked like one. Can I survive without a potion? Oh, that's uh, somebody in the kin. Or used to be in the kin. I don't think they're actually in the kin anymore.
Okay, anyway, we got the last crystal encrusted warg, and we found the Angmarum hideout. And otherwise, I need to find a way down. Yeah, depending, I was reading Kin Chat and I think some people are writing up for tier 2 of the new instance. Depending on my level progression today, there is a possibility that I'll be up for trying that. I've run tier 1, I say plenty of times, but it's actually only been 3 times, I think. 3 times? 4 times? Well, the loot lock will tell me 3 times. I think I've run the other instance once, and then I've run it solo twice, I believe now. I did it earlier today, actually. Took about five minutes, I think. It was actually, considering it only took about five minutes, it wasn't too bad. I did that for screenshots for tomorrow's video, which, speaking of tomorrow's video, I am testing out doing early access videos to channel members. I probably won't ever do exclusive videos for channel members just because I really hope this is a slide. Oh, it almost feels like a slide at some points, like that part's a slide. <laughs> for some reason, it's just fun to slide down those things in this in Gundabad. Also, I need to head up north. I also have to cross the river at some point. I don't know where that would be, where it would be best to do that. There's a bridge some point right there. Ooh, I'm glad you like the new LI system, Freya. I've seen mixed opinions on that, but I think overall I am hearing people like it better than the old one. Personally, I do like it better than the old one, but... I think it could be different than what, what it is now still. But some of the glaring issues of the old one just don't really exist anymore. Because you can... The big thing is being able to reforge your ally, and that leveling up its DPS. Hello, Professor Andre Vietal? I'm really bad with names. But... I'm glad you think my channel is perfect. I don't think it's quite perfect. Also, I completed the book quest somehow. I actually... Oh yeah, I needed to go to an old vineyard. Where was the vineyard? I actually have no idea where the vineyard was. I just saw a bunch of enemies up here. This looks more like a vineyard to me. Sort of. Kind of. There are vines growing between the pillars. That's like the closest thing. Are there wargs here? Oh, there are saber tooth cat looking things. Oh. Yet another thing to remind me of Mist of Wilderland. Yep, definitely the old ally system was way too much grinding, especially if you fell behind and didn't keep up with it as like new content was released because if oh ember gear somebody linked some ember gear I actually have no idea what it looks like but that looks kind of not too great being on level 455 that said i think it's a good thing that loot box gear isn't like the best gear available It is teal though, so I don't know what tier 3 drops of the new instance is. But... Yeah, I think if Ember Gear, that you could buy the little boxes with Embers of Enchantment, which is the same stuff you can get from loot boxes, I think if that were the best gear in the game, uh, people would be pretty mad and consider Gundabad pay to win, which I can definitely see that point if that were the case, but it seems to not be the case. 
Okay, got the travel here. I will we'll go ahead and get that quest. Oh, that's to the Welcome Lofts. Okay. Ready to go to the last zone. That is level 139 is when I can expect to go there. So after I get a few hundred thousand more XP. Now, where's the milestone? It'd actually be useful to set it here, I think. So I have something to get back to this zone. And I'm guessing once I turn in these quests, I'll actually be headed up here anyway. But you might as well just do this. Uh, so if you only want to do PvP in Lotro, then all you have to do is go to the moors at level 140, that is, and buy a starter PvMP set with gold, and then you can rank up farm commendations and all that sort of stuff when you want better gear. But ideally, PvMP gear, even the starter set, I think should be better than basically anything from PvE if they work things right. So ideally... That should be all you need to get the starter set and eventually better armor if you want from PvP. I don't know if there will ever be PvMP exclusive traceries, but that's actually something I just thought of. You might have to do some PvE content for traceries and enhancement runes. Again, ideally that wouldn't be necessary, I think. I think because the ally system is a part of Lotro and a core part of your character, that PvMP content should be able to get you new ally resources, but I don't know that it does. Iscos. I remember Iscos, I think. Maybe I don't, but it sounds familiar. Uh, so I do have a quest going actually north of the Stable Master, and then I have Ingmarum. Oh, there's some Ingmarum here. Who knew? And then book quest up north, Beauty of something. Beauty of Arkarker. Akraker. <laughs> Am I going the right way? I was going the right general direction, unfortunately it was slightly east of where I needed to go. And to get slightly west of where I was, I had to go up some steps. Uh, so your legendary item is 430 and the max is 440. If you are above level 130, as in your level 131 or above, you should be able to get the item level to 465 and the max on traceries would also be 465 with that. Investigate the frozen reaches of Cloven Gap to the northwest. The Rhine Passage. Well, it's going to be a while since we're... A while till we're headed there, rather. Since we're so far down south. I think that's what I was trying to say. And that's why it came out wrong, because... Yeah. Oh, let's see. There's a gem encrusted warg. I mean, crystal encrusted. There's a difference, maybe. Ooh, what did I get? A tracery. Level 131 rare. Unfortunately, it's a clash tracery. I really do hope that. Ooh, a cage. You must be close. Oh, to the Angmarum? Defeat Angmarum in Southwest Cloven Gap. Somehow, I don't think that will be an issue. And then Fell Experiments says search the testing site. Maybe it will be an issue if we don't actually go to the other place with Ingmarum. This guy to join. Hey, anyway, we might as well get this crystal encrusted warg. It helps with the warg slayer deed. And maybe there are more Ingmarum over here. Do I actually have to do anything? I need to search the tent site. Okay, I'll go back. I'll do it more. I'll tap over time. I'm taught. This is really getting dangerous with all these debuffs. I don't know what all the fears do. I had like three fears that did. Oh, decreased shadow mitigation. 
And then I think I had two that were actively doing damage to me. Yeah, so I don't know about grinding school for we weapon XP, but uh, for traceries, that's what I would grind school and library for if you want some teal traceries. It'll take a while because they are random, but it's something you can do on repeat and I think even solo fairly easily. Uh, ideally, I could hit those two things before the Magnus guy killed them, but that ain't the case. Just to make sure I get a hit, I'm going to use Morale Tap. Hey, there's a trigger cache. Where did the champion go? She like dissecting that org or something? Dang worm over there. Here's a book. Or yeah, book journal. A torn fragment of paper. I think I found that journal. I still need to defeat three more Angmarum. This really is turning out to be more of a problem than I expected. Oh, I don't want good. Otherwise, I believe the quests are done. I need to search the vineyards again. Is that for something else? That's for the non-book quest, the Overgrown Vineyard. Which I'll believe that for some reason that name still sounds very familiar. I don't know. Are there Ingmarum? I mean, they're the ones that are back at that old test site thing. Also, how did my health get so low? According to the map, oh, I think they're right up there. Never mind. According to the map, I need to go right back where I was. Yes, these new zones probably will remind people of Moria since we're stuck in a giant mountain. But I find them to be different enough compared to Moria that I don't feel like it's just Moria version 2. So the first few Ingmarum I killed were up northeast of here, so I could probably expect them to spawn before running into... The ones in the southwest part over there, like somewhere around here. In the meantime, there's a boar here. Or not a boar, a morg. There is an Ingmarum way down there as well. I don't know how this will go. I don't know if they'll go into anti-exploit mode or anything. There's that dwarf we were talked to earlier. Realm that wasps and the such. There's an Ingmarum. Oh, here's one. So yeah, there actually were some just down a little bit that I did not realize, but this is okay. I think this will be on T3. Uh, better use resolution just to get a heal up, I think. Okay, so two quests done. I need to search the vineyards and I need to head east anyway. So I will head back to this bridge and go across that for the vineyards. So I wonder what I will do for gear at 140 because in case you all don't know, PVMP gear will be unusable and outside of the Ettenmores come update 30 point, I mean, I'm still not used to 31, update 31.0.2, no, I still said it wrong, update 31.0.3 is when they are intending to enact this change where you will not be able to use pvmp gear outside that and wars aka for pve content and really the rest of the game you will not be able to use your uh cheaply bought pvmp gear which just happens to actually be not bad and pretty decent right now 
you won't be able to use that outside at war. So my initial plan was to buy that gear because, again, it's really easy to get. It's a cheap option and it's actually not bad. And there's a real lack of gear from quests and the such. Especially considering I'm level 139, I'm on the sixth zone in the expansion, and I still don't think I've gotten a piece of gear for every armor slot, which I almost feel like in the very first zone of an expansion, you should get most of your slots filled out with new gear. Now, if you have old raid gear and the such, old good items even, not even necessarily raid gear, I don't necessarily think everything should be replaced right away. But just the loot distribution, it almost feels like an afterthought on this expansion that they kind of rushed. I feel unfortunately like that's the case it seems like for multiple things about this expansion. Uh, search the vineyards, what do I need to search them for? Yes, you can get PvMP gear for every single slot for ultimately just a few gold would be the total cost of it. But I still might do that just to temporarily hold me over so I can run content better and potentially do tier two of the new three mans. And as I mentioned in my video from yesterday about it, I just don't think this should have been an issue in the first place. Hello PDC1, yes, I have broke 9,000 subscribers, even if the past like three days have been a little bit slow. Way to get past the 9,000 mark. Originally I was thinking about doing a special video for 9,000 subs, but I'm actually going to hold off because we're so close to 10k, and 10k is more of a major landmark than 9k. So yeah, that will come later. I really have to find this thing that I need to search the vineyards for. Here we go. Sandstone. No, that's probably a little geode rock. And it's way down there. Okay, so on the map, it's like right... Right here. Right here. Right here. Unless I have to go under... That would be my next guess. There's like an opening in here somewhere. There is that sandstone. I mean, doesn't make sense, but we'll collect it. Yeah, that didn't do anything. Uh, but thank you with pen up and cheerleader cats would be great. Not quite sure if that is what will happen. I know there are a lot of quests that I've at least heard. I don't know. I've heard there are a lot of quests in Cloven Gap that are bugged. I don't know if this would be included in the list. Or if I am... I'm thinking more likely I'm just missing something, but I really have no idea what. The vineyards may be in Eastern Cloven Gap. Gurja. Gurja. Ask me to locate the fabled vineyards of Cloven Gap. The vineyards of Gunabad were once renowned throughout Middle Earth. I've already done a quest that had me search for the vineyards too, which I actually got credited for when I was like west of them. So maybe I could try that, even though I probably went to the same spot this time. We can go west. I'm getting a lot of the uh, beasts here, which I don't happen to need. The saber tooth looking cats. So, Re Ranger 21, you definitely felt lost in Cloven Gap. I haven't run too much into that issue. It's surprisingly vertical, is it, though. I feel like the zone, my impression of it, is it's not really much of a vertical zone, but it actually really kind of is. I actually find this zone to be really neat, the landscape of it. It is, like many zones in Gundabad, actually pretty unique. And I actually find the vegetation more appealing than the basically entirety of Rohan and Gondor. It's just got prettier vegetation somehow than completely outdoor zones to me. Soloing captains, it could suck for soloing captains. I think any class without good debuff removal, the zone would be 
kind of rough on. Okay, so I made my way back all the way up. So we're as high as you can get ish, not really. But as high as you can get, that's somewhat closely located to the vineyards. I'm right here again. There we go. Sage's repository. That's probably what I need. It's to the east of where the marker is, but nope, that is actually the scholar thing. Never mind. It didn't really make sense why I would need a Sage's repository for this quest. But I mean, I targeted an item. And while I'm desperate to target an item, even around here. Okay, maybe right here? Limestone? No, that's still east of where I need to be. Also see I'm getting some wounds. Oh, um, we're out tap over time should be okay, but I'll still use a full resolution. So, BDC1, you're leveling your hunter at level 96, and you're breaking traceries slash runes by level groups. Oh, the breaking of traceries and runes by level group is not really working. You just don't get enough upgrade materials before you get to the next traceries and runes. And yeah, that is my also initial impression of the system, is it's... The leveling experience of it, to me, is just a little bit odd. So enhancement runes, I don't find as much of a problem, but I feel like you should get enough traceries that you can just actively replace what you had. But the feeling I get is that you will do a lot of leveling with unfilled traceries unless you find an extra source of them, as in running group content while leveling, as in basically school and library. And getting, or like spending ancient scripts, farming ancient scripts, which will also ultimately be school and library farming. And then just buying the tracer you want, but then at that point you'll replace it when you level and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so here's this thing. Do I need to go up there? There's a sage's coffer, which should be different than a sage's repository. Actually, what is sage's coffer and why is it different than repository? Is repository just the upgraded version, like how you have rich iron veins? Is that like a... Well, actually, iron was a really bad example. How you have, like, rich scarn veins instead of just a regular scarn vein? Alright, time to check Google, see if it knows anything. If anybody does know anything about this quest, I am happy to... Happy to listen and read information on it. Okay, so... The very first thing on the Lotro forums is issues with this quest. So for anybody looking to complete this quest, you will have to do something else first before you can go here. Which doesn't really make sense since I have the quest, but... Yes, it uh, looks like I have to turn in the other quest and then I can come back here and do the quest. So... Hopefully that will be fixed. I've also heard some people are unable to do it and you might have to abandon and re-pick up the quest and uh, maybe re-log a whole bunch of times. So, let's hope I can just do it after turning in these quests. One thing with the LI system that I was kind of leaning towards the idea of maybe would have been better than what they did would be to have one tracery level range that's below the level cap and one tracery range that is above the cap. So you would have level 45 to 130, which is a huge range. But that way you can find traceries that you want and then you can use enhancement runes. Or when you reforge a level, the traceries up, that would actually be ideal. In fact, for the entire system, I wouldn't mind if that's how it worked. The tracery level, base level of it at least, was based on your LI's item level. So, for example, reforging for level 465 at level 131 would bring all of your traceries up to 465. And then you could use enhancement runes to go beyond that. Eventually, it would be like 499 in this expansion. That way, it also works more so that you can choose what you want to use. 
I feel like that is one of the big shortcomings of the system compared to what they said like one of their goals was was that I think they want it to be really flexible and you could kind of pick and choose what you want but you have to get tons and tons of traceries because every time you swap a tracer you overwrite the old one okay so search the vineyards doesn't seem to be working so I will cancel the quest and go pick it up and come back here and try it again no idea where I pick it up at by the way uh, I'm guessing the this camp, but maybe over here, if the dwarves moved over here, seems possible. No, no. Okay. And yeah, as you say, Freya, make the legendary items just level with you and make getting XP for them like harder to get as you get higher level. I really feel like that's a system the Virtue XP system could use. That's an idea that the Virtue XP system could use, rather. Because one thing about Virtue XP is it it does change a little bit. As you level up, higher level Virtues do take a little bit more Virtue XP to actually level the Virtue up. But if it functioned more like character XP, it could really help with catch-up mechanics and it'd still be harder to actually level the virtues at higher levels. And that's just a system that I think a lot of other games use. Because again, it functions like character XP. Alright, any quest giver here. Uh, this guy will have a quest in 3 minutes 29 seconds. other cat disappeared uh so as far as this quest goes it says three minutes now Okay, so ask the kin if they want to run the three man in the meantime while waiting for this. I can always come back, but I'd rather make use of something, use of time. Okay, so I have one person already. I'll invite them. I think it looks like three people are already running the instance, so that kind of eliminates them. I believe they are attempting tier two, as I mentioned. Yeah, it's true that for me, one of the worst feelings in the game would be when you have all the virtues leveled. I'm, of course, nowhere close to that, but if you have all the virtues leveled, then you get virtue XP. That would just feel really bad. It also feels a little bit bad to me if I already have five virtues leveled and then I have to use virtue XP somewhere else. It just feels a little bit rough. That said, it is really good to have alternative virtues, so it's not a bad thing by any means, but it can sometimes feel a little bit like it's wasted. Oh, they have a lot of health. They're probably geared. I'm still adjusting to over 500k health like not being a ton because even i have over 500 thousand at this point trying to type with a cat
What are we running? Assault Thunderstruck? Two out of three. Durstruck tier. Tier one. 140 T1. We can probably go with anything. I've run this with like three DPS, run it with a. Uh, I've run it three times, so what have I run it with? I've run it with three DPS, run it with two DPS, a healer, run it with three DPS, I think I already mentioned that, run it with the tank and two DPS. Looks like we got somebody frog food. Can I be nosy? I can. They are a minstrel. Okay. Well, there we go. We might have a healer. Uh, do you still have to buy essences or is there any way to proper farm them? So, kind of like in War of Three Peaks, you can run the instance and get some essences. Now, these essences are no good, mind you. I mean, they're, they're, they are essences, but they're the lowest quality uh, level 131 ones. I did do 140, right? Uh... All the mobs are level 140, so I will assume that is a yes. Also, I can use my fancy new food that somebody gave me, which I accidentally clicked the wrong low level one. Maybe I should use up the low level food, though, before I start using the new one. I guess I can say hello to the minstrel, but now it seems like it would be awkward. Oh, so much lag. Oops, definitely didn't want an impressive flourish. flourish, excuse me. Oh, I'm standing in a bad spot. Which way will they go, right? I like going left first just because it's a tougher boss, but it really doesn't matter. Looks like the minstrel is happy to pull a bunch of them. He does have a lot of health, so I have to give him credit for that. <laughs> like, if it's safe for anybody to do that, it is going to be the minstrel, it seems like. The brow taps actually used for damage in this situation. It ain't like the pre-Wildwood days, but it still, still is a uh, thing. Oh, I thought you had actually killed that group meat. At least this is the first time I've done it without killing that group. Uh, so I have all my buffs up. We're good to go. I believe this is a really short talking. And the strategy for this fight, of course, is to avoid all the puddles on the ground and as I might cover in a future video. Just last through the two phases. With the healer, this fight shouldn't be all too bad. I think 
that just slows me. Oh, I pulled aggro. Oh, uh, let's see. Going over here. Did I do? Yeah, I did do my javelin debuffs. It's a miracle. Oh, wait. We do not have all that much DPS this time. I'm used to running this with more DPS, at least, than this. I think the champion is an AoE spec, maybe, in yellow line? I'm not entirely sure, but... Also, having the minstrel be on full heals, it seems like, makes things a little bit slower. I'm still not even level 140, which makes things a little bit slower. Well, backed ourselves into a corner. I think all the puzzles should disappear, actually. Uh, do I have never surrender up? I do, actually. What classes would I recommend for noobs? I think the Hunter is one of the most recommended starter classes. And the Champion, if you like melee, is another good option. Those would probably be the most two, say, noob-friendly classes the game has. Accidentally hit the bat twice with that single ability, so that was a little bit rough. Uh, I think I'll actually cancel that. And then... I actually have no idea why I did power memory there. Well, I'm in a puddle now. Oops, I didn't want to use whatever I used. Uh, I'd really like a... this isn't going to help with that. Okay, there we go. I was going to say I would really like a seize the moment. We got through the first boss fine. Again, this fight is a little bit hectic, but... I do find it easier overall, less deadly, maybe is how I should put it, than the other one. Ooh, getting a little bit of lack of spikes. Itchiness. Alright, so I can get Ascendant Lightning. There is actually a chance that I will have my first tracery, level 131 tracery. So 21308 is what I have to beat. This is 23,000, so this is going to be the first tracery upgrade even though it's a uh, purple replacing a teal that's the thing with the clash tracers it's just not worth replacing teal with purple from something like that I could switch to melee stance but I like being lazy sometimes It is nice to run this. I've run this again three times before this one at level 140 being under leveled. I think the lowest I've run it at was 136, maybe 7. Okay, this is the tough fight. I actually try to stay ranged as much as possible this fight. Really like the yellow line. I mean, I played the yellow line anyway, but. Yeah, so the huge, there is not really a huge difference between 121 and 131. So that is one reason it's been a bit hard for me to replace Traceries. But the difference between a Teal 121 and a Purple 131 is also fairly minor, it seems. Yeah, if you want a tactical class, as Plastonic says, perhaps the Runekeeper could be an option. Now, I wonder if this guy can just heal through the cyclone. That would really be ideal. 
don't think I've played this with a healer where we've tried that strategy. Also, I already had Never Surrender up. But that thing's pretty hard to avoid anyway. I'm doing really bad now. Yeah. I should have been able to avoid that, but... Oh, they're rezzing me. Wasn't ready for that. I'll probably have to use a potion right when I come up. I'll take a bunch of damage. I'll let the tornado hit me some. Less of a tornado, more of a general cyclone. Let's see, it is spinning that way. Do we loot the chest? Ah, uh, we should be able to go out this way. There will be a goblin, but that's okay. Am I in melee stance? I am. Then Iron Ring of Durstock. Don't quite want that. Yeah, if you want a more defensive melee, Class Guardian would be a good choice as well. I actually find Guardian more fun than Champion, personally, but I think I am probably in the minority as far as that goes. Okay, so I have Ascendant Light, but I don't want to replace the Ascendant Light because I like that set bonus. But I actually have four Ascendant Lights. I thought two of these said Ascendant Lightning which would seem a little bit odd, but I think the reason I actually want all four of these Ascendant Lights is I get a an outgoing healing rating, which as little as my healing is, I actually think it is worth keeping that like 58,000 something outgoing healing over 3,000 crit rating. So I did not actually get an upgrade tracery after all that. And the loot I got was a ring that I don't need. So I'll just end up disenchanting it for a few things of a few crafting materials. Now, one thing I've noticed with this instance, and this was kind of similar in Minas Morgul, but I really think even tier one of the three mans, you could get some sort of embers of enchantment. Just something to make it feel like it's a little bit more worth running them. And I don't think purple traceries make it feel like it's worth running them. I don't think enhancement runes really do, but they are useful. Don't even get that many enhancement runes. Like, I think you get one yellow enhancement rune and one purple tracery uh, from each of the bosses. It did help me get a little bit closer to 140. If I really wanted to get to 140, I have tons of XP boosts, and of course there are ways to get level a lot faster than questing. Uh, so this guy should have a quest for me, search the vineyard, so hopefully this time it will work. If not, I might need to relog a whole bunch of times, it sounds like, and then it might possibly work. And hello, oh my god, uh, you just finished Gunabad. And, oh, now you are rolling a brawler and going through every epic. Well, good luck with the brawler adventure. I hope you enjoy it. I've seen some people not like the brawler class, and some people like it. And as I'm saying that, I realize that's something you'd say about every class. But with it being a new class, I've heard some people find the gameplay just unappealing, and some people find it just really fun to punch things. I need an overhead cam. I need like a third cat cam, one for the keyboard slash cat slash microphone. So you all can see the chaos that goes on. For me, it's chaos for the cat. It's nap time on my arm.
Well, finding lots of scarring along the way. I'm going, yeah, going back up to the vineyards and I need to get Mistwalker, Pelton, Sabertooth Fangs. And I need to search for Signs of Corruption, which is also in the vineyards, I believe. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have found the vineyards, but I haven't gone to the exact ring location for the search for the vineyards, which was right around here. Uh, so it does seem like the quest is probably not working again. Uh, I think I'm in melee stance, which is actually okay. I can go ahead and just use surety of death. In fact, I'll even use melee resolution. Melee is not that bad with Warden. I just find it better. Prefer being ranged. Uh, so as far as the brawler being a champion without a weapon, I see a lot of people compare the brawler to champion, but to me it's more like a burglar and almost more like a warden compared to champion. Oh, somebody's here. Uh, so the big things to me that make the brawler different than the champion is one they have mixed aoe and single target your single target and aoe aren't like in their own dedicated spec they have pretty low target aoe at least to start you can get some i was about to say talents you can get some traits to increase the number of targets and of course traceries now But that's how they remind me a little bit of Burglar. They also have support that's not really similar to Champion. Where they have some group buffs, actually. They have some really weak debuffs, which I guess is actually similar to Champion. I don't think the Champion debuffs are actually... I think Champion debuffs are actually stronger than the Brawler's debuffs. If I remember correctly. Okay, so just checking down here just in case the vineyards for some reason this time it'll work. Actually, you can go in this little hut right here. But still, I'm not getting progress on the overgrown vineyards. So, again, according to the Lotro forums, it is possible that relogging will fix it and also possible it will not. I really must be outdated on the champion. It's been, oh, I really don't play champion much, but I did not know they could actually give crit and attack speed to the pillow ship. That's neat. I think what I really remember is Rind, the armor debuff from that, and then the devastating strike, I think, debuff. And I also think the whole combat flow of the brawler is way different than the champion. That would be more so where I see the differences. The gameplay flow and gameplay systems they have are just different. Okay, so I will try relogging. Okay, so 39.9 south, 119.9 west. As soon as you cross the bridge is where it might work. So right next to the pool, actually, where I just was is where it might complete for me. Let's hope G4N0N Dork. Ganon? Ganon Dork? On the forums. Their location is helpful. So there's this pool. Oh, 
so far, nothing triggered as far as search for the vineyards. Okay, coming in from the north. Yeah, the champion is way faster than it used to be. I will definitely give it credit there. As far as funness goes, for me, it used to feel really slow, but then they adjusted the animation speeds and more importantly, the animation delay between abilities. And it is way smoother than it used to be a few years ago. Actually, have to use never surrender. I guess that's what happens when you let. Uh... That even sounds like group. Oops, I was not paying attention to my health. Uh, grouping up could also potentially fix this. Maybe. I wonder if I abandon the quest like I did, relog, then accept the quest fresh. If that would somehow help. But maybe I could try one more relog way down here, where I'm definitely far away from it. While we do all this relogging, oh, that's the wrong camera. I guess I don't have the don't have a cat in the cat cam. Wow, she actually willingly got on the, got on the stool, that's what it's called. There are two different banners here. There is whatever that one is and whatever that one is. This looks like one of those fancy new capes, cloaks I mean, that they have in WoW. Just a lot of them, at least new back when I was playing, like Legion times especially. They have a bunch of fancy shaped ones like that. I wasn't a big fan of them, but I also have grown to not be a fan of cloaks in general now. I much prefer things like Warden's Packs and the such, or my adventuring backpack. Interrupted. Reforged Champion Sword of the Second Age. Ah, an old LI. At least you could see everything compared to the new LIs. It's just like such a rough UI. Even the text is smaller on the relics. Anyway, let's see. Overgrown? Wait, did I actually complete it this time? I did. Two relogs and it worked. Nice. So now I still need some mist walker pelts. These are not mist walkers. The mist walkers are the stealth ones, I believe. And I also need to search for signs of corruption. So oh boy, this search for signs of corruption quest works, which I believe I can somehow keep navigating. Hmm. There we go. Is this chest these signs of corruption? Right around the location, I'll of course loot the chest. Wait, I must face the target. Oh, that was facing the target, actually. Uh, I will do Fierce Resolve while I'm waiting for... Wait, one of the cats just... It disappeared, it didn't even run back. It just like... Yeah, it disappeared. That was actually one of the ones I needed. It was a Mistwalker. Well, I'm in combat. Oh. Having issues? When I'm doing this, it's always entirely possible. Okay, quest wise, signs of corruption. There's a limestone. I hope this quest isn't also bugged. 
I mean, I feel like this is almost a sign of corruption. Cloven Gap Mistwalkers. Oh, hey. Edding Marum and some crystals and a corrupted looking crystal. Anyway, we need some Mistwalkers, which I believe can be all around the... Oh, I still need to search for signs of corruption? Yeah, I guess so. There's a ring to the west. And somehow didn't cast Resounding Challenge when I thought I did, and I'm silenced. Also, there's some Mistwalkers here, so let's get them. Uh, let's get them and not die in the process, but I use a potion. Did I use a potion? I used the potion. Did I just take so much damage that it didn't matter? That is possible. I should be doing better here. Well, I got one Mistwalker. Need one more after that. I also might go ahead and do some task turn-ins. I believe the Frost Rhyme skin. Uh, yeah, that is a task item, not just a trophy. Oop. Quest turn in. Might as well turn it in. Oh, uh, let's see. Task task items. Is there no task board here? I actually do not see a task board. Floating names on? Milestone? Mailbox. These guys really don't have tasks for me. They'll make me have to remember to go to a mare grind. Uh, I have no idea how to grind gold, Freya, because gold is, like, fairly common. Uh, it used to be running endgame instances, you could get quite a bit of gold just over time, and selling anything you got. And also nowadays, I know you can uh, sell crafting materials can fetch a decent price, even low-level ones. I'm not sure I would recommend farming low-level crafting materials just to sell them. I feel like that would be not really worth the time, but some people do it, so you could find it the same way. Okay, I need to go down here. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to get through that. Another example is I have a lot of these sunstone shards from just my leveling in Gundabad. Which are all in my carry-all now. So sunstone shards, I have 25 of those. Those used to, people are trying to sell them for like hundreds of gold. When the expansion started, I could be gold capped if I had this many and tried to sell them. But what I'm curious is how much these actually are now. When an expansion is fresh like this, people sell the stuff for kind of crazy prices. Like, if I could actually sell all these even for 300 gold each, that would be quite a lot of gold. Which would probably, in the long run, be better than using them for my own self. But, that is just another example of how you can get some gold. But really, most of my gold, I just don't really spend it and just naturally accumulate it. That's kind of the opposite of how I used to be. Uh, some people, I'd actually be impressed if anybody remembers this, but I wrote a gold making guide way back in the day. I also, in World of Warcraft, that is one of my more well-liked activities in that game is actually gold making. It was pretty fun in Mist of Pandaria because you can make quite a bit just like running dungeons and the such, running heroics. Task items are even selling for over 50 gold per stack. Well, I shouldn't be selling those to the vendor then. It'd be 
selling those on the auction house. You know how much gold I could have had? Thank you for that information, Adriger. That is something that I think I will actually be doing. Ooh, one more resolution. I wasn't quite expecting this danger, but that seems to be... I don't know if that seems to be this zone, but this one is just excessive debuffs and leads. It's kind of fun. It does keep it entertaining. I just really do worry what this would be like on a class that can't really remove those, even as well as a Warden. Guardian, I think, has one of the best debuff removers. Runekeeper also has a really good one. I don't remember if you can use their debuff remover while running now. Search for clues. Well. Oh, this thing. It actually made me search. Another journal, indeed. So there is another quest, search for an Adathara. The sky has fallen up to the north, and I should hopefully get some of the Mistwalkers. The last pelt I need. So even older task items can sell for quite a bit. Hmm. Too bad Windswept Furs are only trophies. But yeah, because I don't really care about gold too much, while it is really useful, don't get me wrong, gold is definitely useful. I just haven't found myself even thinking too much about it, which again is just the way I am with Lotro lately. A Warden does sort of have crowd control, so there are, if I wanted to go through this less tactically and avoid debuffs, that is definitely true. I could do more crowd control. Hampering Javelin is a great example in AoE slow. And as well as if I needed to knock out a single target for, hey, five seconds, I could do that with the ambush. I feel like I'm in a really bad spot to try to go north. I do need to go up and not down, but do I want to try to go up there and just... That'd probably be easier. Working my way through the vineyards. And then champion... I wonder, I think champions have a not as good debuff remover if I'm remembering correctly, but I'm guessing they can get through this a little bit decently. They have the AoE stun. And more instant damage. A problem with the Warden is a lot of their damage is over time. So while I do a lot of damage killing these things and it's not that slow, I ain't even getting to like the full potential with over time. Uh, so crowd control, yeah, I could see Lightning Runekeeper actually having a really not bad time on the landscape in a place like this. Hunter should be plenty fine. Especially if you play Blue Line Hunter. If you play a sl slower Red Line Hunter also wouldn't be bad. And then Captain... I, I actually wonder how Captain would be... Uh, if I remember correctly, their debuff remover can be a self heal, but you might have to be in like blue line or yellow line for that. And then their damage is not as great as other things, but might not be too terrible. They also do have a little bit of lacking in AoE. I think they could get through it fine and just be slower. I'm kind of talking more, keeping up with the pace I am going, for example. How classes would do. Uh, burglar? I could see them being either good or bad. I just don't see Burglar running into too many issues, but they're just overall a slower paced class with stealthing and the such. What other classes are there? Bear Warning should be totally fine, even in Redline, I think. I wonder... I'm actually going to go ahead and go north. 
and then take a stable master ride south i think so i can go ahead and have this one discovered there might even be a task for it up there What else is there? There are other classes. Brawler, as far as I have heard, their damage, even after the huge 50% damage buff, is still kind of weak. I think the Brawler gameplay flow just doesn't really work that well for landscape either. Our need is dire. <laughs> At your service. Uh, Guardian, they have been getting a really good debuff remover and don't see them having too many issues. Might not be as much damage as other classes, but overall getting through things. I don't think too bad. Probably, for me, it would probably be a better experience than Captain. Uh, I was going to, before going on about searching the park, I was going to take a Stable Master ride and see if there are any task boards here. There are not any task boards, so I'm actually thinking, just so I don't forget about the task turn-ins, I will go to Noble Gate. And I want to see where my reputation is at because I honestly don't remember what tier the respected tier is. And I might go ahead and use some rep accelerators to help with that a little bit quicker. So, yeah. We have this guy. So... Uh, respected, honored, then celebrated. And I have heard you need celebrated for like one of the weeklies or daily quests, which I don't think is a good thing if that is the case. Uh, this is something that has happened in Lotro's past and previous updates, expansions, and the such. And for some reason, they really like having weeklies or dailies locked behind reputation tiers, which is... I've talked about this before, but the opposite of what I think it should be. To me, in an MMO, dailies and weeklies are things that should help you get reputation. They shouldn't require you to get reputation to unlock them. Uh, I think that was four, but I took a whole stack, so that might have been five. Yeah, that was only four. There we go. Got that done for the day. So, reputation-wise, speaking of, I am, yeah, a little bit higher on that. Uh, anything I can spend my coins on, I'm up to 39 coins. I already have the Gundabad Bat, which is pretty fun. Gear-wise, I think even at level 140, what is it, Kindred? I think even at level 140, it's not even kindred ally yes at level 140 the pants if we can finally get to this i don't think they will be an upgrade i would happily trade half my agility for an actually useful stat but not for a block rating light armor with block rating that's a bit weird it's not that light armor classes can't block or shouldn't be able to block, but it's just not something I would usually think of. Actually, can lore masters and rune keepers even block? Would minstrels be the only one that can actually use that stat? Okay, so we need to go to Southern Cloven Gap. Uh, I don't actually know if Captain has a lot of healing in red line. You can get a lot of the traits in the blue line to get some decent healing. As far as group heals go, I think they can get decent group heals. Yeah, Lore Master can parry. I think Runekeepers should be able to parry. It'd be a little bit awkward parrying with a stone, but I think it would be possible. It's still technically a weapon. But of course, block rating wouldn't help with either of those cases. Laggy jumps. Uh, so as far as quests go, yes, I believe now I'm being sent up there for everything else anyway. 
be really nice if there was like a cat slayer deed preferably not called cat slayer but big cat slayer just to have another slayer deed for those things as far as I know, I've only run into two Slayer Deeds in this zone. Hopefully there would be, like, I think most other zones have three Slayers. There is Angmarum and Glo Cloven Gap. There's also Glooming Turn, which I'm on the advanced of. That one, I think, would be pretty easy to get done. All this stuff, I still plan to go back and do, and I'm... Yeah, I actually am starting to be quite a bit overleveled. Even though I'm only one level over level technically for what I'm doing. With all the Slayer Deeds and the such that I've kind of skipped over. And haven't done missions every day and the such. Memorial Stone. Hmm. Is there another item I need to interact with here? Or is this another one of the broken benches? Some of them are floating. Is that what's broken about them? Some of them are broken as well. Do I just need to travel here? Travel through the benches and I'll update? These quests could be a little bit more descriptive when it just says explore the park and then doesn't give anything else there. The quest name is broken benches. And I should explore empty crumbling benches line paths, so I'm kind of exploring all that. I have something over here, no item to interact with. There is a thingy. I don't think that's quite a raven. I don't know what it is, some sort of bird. Oh, so Harvey, you are having an issue with this quest as well. That is unfortunate. I don't know if this is also like the old one where you have to actually complete some other quest before you can do it. And then you might have to relog a whole bunch to get it to work anyway. If it does function like the overgrown vineyard, is that what it was? The vineyard quest that maybe is how it works. Uh, this is one. I will check the Lotro forms. I have to get up, I think. I think the map is the road... I don't know, this might be the road, but I think I have to go north of the road to get upward. I haven't looked up at the sky too much, but in the zone you can't actually see the sky. It looks very gray and kind of dark. It's nighttime, I believe. Oh yeah, somebody else that I know also got teal, or I, I don't know that it was teal stuff, but they got LI stuff from old lower level deeds that they could use that was like yeah level 131 stuff is what i mean all right back at the camp we have Sweet an elf Will you stay a moment? Wow, oh, she's come to see the forest under the mountain. See, when there's something interesting like that, just like these random elves and a place where I've only seen dwarfs, those are the type of situations when I typically am more interested in actually reading the quest text. Collect plant samples. That does seem more like an elf thing than a dwarf thing. Ah, uh, something. Here we are. Durin's Translator. As we always have. Crystal Most caches. I guess I'll want to update my milestone to be at this camp, because why not? And there's something just outside the camp for me. Uh, plant sample? Crystal? Full oh, plant. That is a plant sample, I think. And for some reason, I thought I read that as one out of nine, but it is one out of three. Oh yeah, so I was supposed to go to Google. Somehow searching Google 
search his little trope forms better sometimes. The broken benches. That was on auto. Let's see, that was from before the patch. Okay, it sounds like you might be able to... Restart the Broken Benches quest. Uh, let me go ahead and continue this, but yeah, that is my initial investigation suggests to perhaps just try to re-enter the area, redo it. Uh, can't seem to target any of these for plant samples. Delete key is not working. There's something I need over here. It is the... Oh. Matters of Hunt and Heart. Talk to Clotha. Oh, is she... He? Oh, above. That's entirely possible, okay. I've also heard of some NPCs not existing and some being like stuck in the ground or not visible. So, yeah. Being aware of issues before you quest in a zone, I guess, can help. Wrong way. I feel like I'm going right back at the park now, so I might as well do stuff down here. There's a warden. Oh, whoa. That was unexpected. Fortunately, I did not die. Okay, so I'm back at the park. And I need to do something in the water. Do I need to go all the way to the waterfall? Oh, you can actually ride through that. For some reason, I was expecting it to be more of a hard stop. Huh? I am so confused. Oh, I'm running! I was able to get through that wall a little bit. Even my character is, like, getting through it. Whee. Anyway, that's obviously not progressing the quest. Okay, so for exploring the park, I will try the abandon strategy that did not work for the previous quest, and then I can try relogging if it doesn't want to work this next time. Otherwise, I do have some quests I can do while waiting for that timer to reset, which should be like five ish minutes. Uh, there's also limestone, can gather some geodes. Now, there should be, whatever the white quest is, some plant samples for me. With the fetid pools, but maybe they're actually down low, down back where I was down there. I wasn't targeting anything like in the entire area, so I was searching. Here's one. Also some basalt here. Yeah, I do see this being... Actually, I don't see. Like, this looks like a fetid pool, but can't really do anything with it. Bloody Names is on. Oh, uh, let's see. Memorial Stone. I think that was for the park quest. Here's some. But also cannot get these. I feel like I'm supposed to be able to get these for the plant samples as well. Hello, the Retro Multiverse. You're wondering some advice for someone who loves Lord of the Rings but can't easily get into this. Ah, uh, so... Hmm. It could just be that this is not a game for you. That's entirely possible. I feel like Lotro is, could definitely be a tough game to get into because it's an older MMO. And... 
if you don't like the MMO genre, it might be a tough sell. And if you don't like older MMOs, it might also be a tough sell because of that. So I found those two other pools. I will pick up, maybe I'll relog and then see if that fixes things and then maybe abandon a bunch of quests. Here's actually a pool plant. It looked like the other one had the affected pools, but maybe I'm just able to get things up here. Oh, never mind. This quest is working. It was just a little bit confusing to me. Uh, good night, PDC1. Thank you for joining the stream. In search of all work. All right then. Uh, so otherwise, I canceled a quest, and I don't actually see a quest giver here. So it is possible that the person who gave that quest is actually there. They are okay. I had to search for the correct ring, so that's actually a minute and a half. I was going to say it's also entirely possible that they were at the southern camp for some reason. But that was not the case. Now, the other quest I have that I said I had to go back vertically up for is over here, so I can go ahead and do that one. I have a bunch of pelts. Our need is dire. Wolf pelts, as far as I can tell. It's kind of gross, though, if you ask me. Add furs to the pile. There you go. I... Return to... Ozni, who just happens to be right over here. I don't remember talking to him before. And there's a hurt hearts. Talk to Mother Ama. Hmm, okay. So you have played World of Warcraft, so that's at least familiarity with the genre covered. Uh, so, as far as Death Knight and WoW, I don't think there's really anything that quite translates to that. I feel like, actually, Brawler and Warden would be the closest, but they're not really close at all to it. And the only reason I say that is because Death Knight, at least back in the day, they might still, in some situations, have, uh, like, they have the Blood Runes, Frost Runes, and Holy Runes, and that's just a system of, like, three things. And the Wardens have the three Gambit Builders, and the Brawler has the three setup skills. But yeah, as far as real gameplay that's like the Death Knight, actually, I don't really know. I'd almost say Guardian is the closest, but also Champion could be close to Frost Death Knight, but not really. There really just is no class close to. That. Personally, I do actually like Lotro and especially nowadays preferred over WoW. And same would be true for Rift, Star Wars The Old Republic, and the such. STO, that must be Star Trek Online. I never did play that one. Captain could be a little bit close to Death Knight. I'd consider Captain. If I had to pick a class that's most like Paladin, I would pick Captain. I feel like Death Knight is too much of an evil type class archetype to really be close to anything non-monster player in Lotro. Okay, so apologies in the sky, going back to her. Back to him. Wait, there's Nosni. It said talk to Nosni. Uh oh. Wait. 
Apologies in the sky. It has me going down there. But Nose Knee's right here. This game sometimes does have continuity errors, apparently. Bay Warning is closest to Paladin. I would not really expect somebody to say that. And in my experience, there's really nothing that close to it, but I would definitely consider Captain personally closer to Paladin. I think I will jump, but I still just... I'm confused by the two nose knees. I don't know how you duplicate yourself in the game, but it just makes me wonder how I can get two Louis Dins. Well, we made it one level down. Oh, I made it. Nice. Now I should be able to jump freely and keep my short duration. No, 30 second break. Like the fireworks, that sounds fun. Fireworks explode above the forest beneath the mountain. Where? While this quest seems to work, they should at least actually have fireworks go off. Okay, back to Clotha. Also, there's some of the thingies I need over here, so might as well get them. Also, we have to go back to the park. Maybe this could be the twin of Nosni and just pretending to be Nosni. Well, Nosni can be lazy and stay up there. The real Nosni, that is. Daywath. I have no idea what Daywath is. None of these sound like real herbs or plants to me. Globin Gap plants with special properties are written in ancient tales. Maybe that's what the deal is. Well, got all eight of these. It's kind of unexpectedly so. As far as exciting classes to play in Lotro, if you haven't done Guardian or Champion, I think those could be potential options if you like melee. Of course, they're the two kind of warrior-like melee classes in Lotro. Uh, do I go up and finish the Apologies in the Sky or wait? I will wait and try this park thing again. I do think if I were starting out Lotro and played a Hunter, I do think I would get a little bit bored of it. Unless the blue line is just a little bit more exciting to me with the whole moving around and shooting thing, but... Okay, so I found the park. And now it's going to have me explore the park. And the fountains still flow. I don't remember the fountains still flowing coming up last time. Uh... That worked this time. All I had to do was abandon it and restart it, and there you go. Uh, so I still have Fetid Pools, which is going to be collect clay from Kurdoshalak, which is the river name, I'm guessing. Maybe, potentially. And then there's the white quest and the purple quest. Purple quest is caches, and that's going to be up here. So maybe I'll start with that one. Because it's well, down here, I mean. 
There's also the Warden, but if you are a free-to-play player, it's a class you would have to buy and can be tough to get into, but that is the one I am playing. And not only do I consider it fun, I actually consider it to be my favorite class. I believe I will have some wargs trying to stop me from getting these crystals. Uh, the lore master that is going to be the name of that magic class there's also the rune keeper is the next the other main magic class in lotro uh they do not have portals the closest thing to portals would be the hunters actually have guide to skills which can you can travel your whole fellowship can travel with you and then the Warden class has self-ports, which would be like mages, teleports, and WoW. As far as summoning goes, the Captain can summon any Fellowship member. You don't even need multiple people. Unlike the Warlock in WoW. I guess it is getting kind of late. I didn't expect to finish this zone today, but I feel like I'm kind of far north. I still haven't gotten to the big Angmarum camp, and I would just expect tons of quests there. So, I'm considering wrapping up actually after this quest set, I think. Seems like it'll take a while to collect all these crystal caches and the such. Maybe I shouldn't have quite jumped. I should have double checked that there were no crystals back up there. All I'm targeting is that sandstone though. crystals here. Oh, that makes a lot of noise when I destroy them. And then down. Oh, to Goblin Town. Not today, at least. I've actually been thinking about Goblin Town. It's been a while since I've been there. And I don't know the technical possibility of this to prevent accidents from happening, but doing a Goblin Town challenge without any map, like cannot open the end game map, mini map I think would be acceptable. But yeah, attempting that. Yes, the Hunter Guide spells, those are the ones that are, that can port Fellowship members. They are, like the word of musters, I have a bunch here, it says like muster and Esteladlan, so you just teleport there. The hunter ones, you teleport yourself there and then your fellowship members will have the option to travel with you. There we go. Hello, William. So you are trying to get back into Lotro, but having a hard time getting past Moria and tired of level areas. So, yeah, Moria can be... I feel like a divisive zone. Some people really like it, some people don't like it, some people get tired of it quickly. Um, if you're trying to get past Moria, you can actually start Lothorian pretty early, level-wise. Depending on your class and ability and just to play the game and the such. You could go there, maybe 55. But you're wondering on a race class combination that's super easy to solo. Uh, Hunter is a big one that's easy to solo. There is also the Warden. I would even vote the Warden as being perhaps the best solo class in the game. But it is true, there are some points when the Hunter can actually out self-heal the Warden, which is crazy. And yeah, bear warning, as far as soloing difficult content and even getting through the landscape quickly, it's really good. They just lack, compared to the Hunter and Warden, they lack the ability to pour easily. So what did I need to do here? Collect some clay? I assumed I needed to collect clay from the river, so that's kind of why I headed down here. 
Also, the map is slightly offset. It's not as bad as the other zone, but you're like slightly southwest of where you actually are on the map and the zone. It's really bad at Deep's Crave, and potentially if I zoom out, it's more accurate, which it actually, once again, just like Deep's Crave actually does look to be the case. Hello, Stephen King. Uh, legendaries, there are some legendaries that are... There, I, there used to be some with generic names. Maybe they're more... Yeah, some of them are just generic names. Some of them are more unique, I believe. And legendary weapons is a whole system where now you actually only get one set of allies. You can get multiple sets if you want, but they just like stick with you from level 50-ish and onwards. You can actually get them as low as 45, but it depends more so when you go through the content to get them, which is the Walls of Moria. And usually I don't end up doing that till the mid upper 40s. Where is the Kersha Dulok? Kurdusha, Kurdusha Lock, rather. Cluck clay from the banks of the Kurdushalok. Well, maybe I need to go back down. There's granite. Ah, over there maybe? That is the one place I could actually see it being. Yeah, you can also give your allies their own unique name as mech can boss says. There's a treasure cache. So this was worth it. Hey, there's a wormling. Now, give me my clay. There actually is clay here. Uh, I don't know about PvP and Lotro. I have not played PvP in a long time. But it recently got a pretty big update and now for the first time in a very long while it seems as an active developer working on it. And it, yeah, recently got updated for the first time in many levels and updates. We got PVMP gear. Dragon Slayer, that is going to be the third Slayer deed for this zone. Uh, I don't think Elf Hunter is a bad choice. I also don't think High, as far as I know at least, High Elf Hunter isn't a bad choice. I made a High Elf Hunter just because I prefer High Elves over Elves. Like, uh, what would that be called? For aesthetics, visuals, reasons. That said, I am playing an Elf right now. Also, I'm sinking way down in my chair. There are tons of furniture items for player housing, but one issue that I've heard people run into as far as housing is not enough places to put off your items. There are just limited, limited things you can, limited decorations you can place. Yes, animations are different on High Elf compared to Elf. I don't know about animation speed. I know there's rumblings of issues with certain races such as Dwarf having really slow animation speeds and High Elf having really fast animation speeds, specifically for the champion class. But yeah, I don't know for Hunter if Elf or High Elf has faster or if there yeah, is even a difference between them. I noticed these guys have a lack of debuffs and bleeds. I almost feel like I can breathe around these mobs. I think High Elf Warden would be better than Elf Warden. One reason is because of the racial trait for increased light type damage. The reason this character is an elf is because he was made before High Elves were a thing. So that's kind of how that happened. Oh no, I actually did not mean to attack the goat. I was going to try to go through this whole zone without killing a goat. 
Uh, it looks like I missed a... Well, I don't know that I missed a lot of the Lyle Pass. But it looks like there might be a bit of that to the west. I think I might turn in the quests I have, since I have a lot to turn in. And see if I get other quests, just because this one quest for the quill work stuff seems to be a little bit all around the place, so I might get other things that are in... Oh, I'm actually... I just need the Fingloth and the Lylas. Actually, yeah. Well, maybe I could do it. At, yeah, at this point, I might as well do it in the wrap-up for the day. I also prefer Guardian over Champion. I don't think that's the case for... I don't even know if it'd be for most people, but I do find Guardian more fun than Champion, even DPSing. And it is true that the high health and health difference isn't all that big. The 5% damage won't actually translate directly to 5% damage, kind of like the weapon damage. If you have like plus 5% bow damage, it doesn't actually work out to be plus 5% damage compared to if you use a crossbow. We are getting Dingloth on this side of the river. The warg might be rude, but at least he waited until I finished gathering that flower plant thing. I think you could definitely get to level 130 with a red line high elf guardian. I think you could even get to level 140 with it, no problem. That is what my guardian is. The only reason I have stopped playing my guardian who is level 80 something is because she is stuck at the point of needing to do West Rohan. And just the leveling experience after, say, 75-ish just isn't all that fun to me in Lotro. It gets a little bit more fun after, say, level... especially level 120, I feel like. But even to an extent, 115 plus, the leveling experience gets more fun to me again. But still, there are just so many levels in Lotro where... Now, sometimes leveling isn't the most exciting. I think low level leveling is still more exciting to me than high level leveling. Like the difference between a level up at level, say, even level 40, is that is about a, let's see. Maybe I'll pick a better level. At level, that would be 2.5%. But level 50 to 51, you get a 2.5% increase in your total character level. But level 100 to 101 is only a 1% increase in character level. So it just feels more boring, and I think that's partially why. Each level feels less meaningful as you get higher level. One more Fingloth. Here I go killing another goat. This is on accident. I don't know why these goats are evil goats. They look like normal goats to me. Unless I just don't know goats well enough, which is entirely possible, even if I have a tiny burgundy goat. It does look a little bit shape different. I know this is a tiny goat, but still... Yes, can't put numbers in your character's name, but you could still name it. Uh, the Red Chucks. Without the O2. Yeah, Freya, that is actually how I feel. Leveling just gets... I mentioned level 75, so leveling does get boring after Isengard to me as well. Even sometimes in Isengard, it can be, but I don't know why. I just find that Rohan point to be when I experience the leveling to really be more and more boring going forward. While I like the questing experience and don't mind replaying through the quest on alts eventually, in an area like this, and as I mentioned, level 115 or 120 plus even, the, still the whole leveling experience itself... kind of gets more boring. 
for Isengard, you mentioned Freya, it started to be bad at Isengard-ish. For me, the gap of Rohan, I think, would be the most boring part of the Isengard, Dunland, general area. Because there was a lot of, like, just follow the path and do this move, do this move, do this move type quests where it just wasn't as fun of a questing style and got really repetitive is what it felt like. Felt like you were doing the same thing over and over again and just with cosmetic differences and the area you were actually in. But Outside of that, I thought the Rise of Isengard expansion was really fun, and the Great River Zone was also quite fun to me. Uh, the best way to progress fast as a warden, to uh, zoom around the landscape pulling as many mobs as you can, that's kind of what I do. So gambits are hard. I think gambits, if you play the warden for a while, I think you get used to gambits and you'll learn them and learn what's good when, even learn what's bad when. And we found some snow and some scary drakes and whelplings. I accidentally ended up right next to the quest turn in area, I believe. Uh, quest turn in area might actually be up there. Ooh, is that just a rock? Actually, it does look like it. Almost look. I look, yeah, like a fancy gold scarred thing. We ah, back in this area. Okay, I really do have to pay attention for an Elias, which is right there. The landscape on this place is pretty neat. They have it very viney and full of petals the texture itself on the the underlying texture is like branches and just like ground up dirt and the such what am i thinking of not branches roots tree roots oh where am i going prefer to not go that way. If I can, I'd like to escape this place this way to the east. I also should probably get rid of that disease. I do have power potions somewhere here. And I can get rid of the disease. Okay, I gotta continue through this a bit. Oh, there used to be an app to remember gamuts. That's crazy. I know way back in the day I used to use bad gamuts all the time. Then I actually took the... Put in more effort, I guess, to find the useful gamuts. Uh, am I in the right direction? I believe I am. Also, when I had all these quests done, I could have done the warden strategy and just mustered to a whole different place and... So I've traveled here, but that really does sometimes just take away from the immersive experience. Yeah, the regular classes that are in free to play Lotro are definitely more basic, is kind of how I would call them. The Classes you have to buy in some form, whether it's an expansion or straight from the Lotro store or something, they're usually more unique. You have the Runekeeper, they have their attunement system, they're also the second magical class, and they do it a bit different than the Lore Master, a little bit more destructively. And they can even more dedicated heal. And then the Warden, its whole Gambit system and all that sort of stuff that goes with it. Then you have the... Bay warning, which can skin change into a bear. And then you have the brawler, which punches things with battle gauntlets. Mother Ama. Or Ama. I guess it could be either. 
Flowers for the fallen, quell for blossom, smiting this way. How many quests did she have? Like three for me? Yeah, talk to a bunch of people now. Need to turn in some quests as well. Continue some quests. Find the translated journal. He is the translator after all. And I still need to bring the clay. Oh, mix the clay in the Mordor. Hello, Raffle. You're from Germany, which is probably getting really late there if it's getting a little bit late for me. Uh, which job should you do as a rough, like a new player? So by job, I assume you mean class. I think the... Oh, maybe you could also mean crafting like your vocation. I always like Explorer for a new character. Like my first character in Lotro on any server is probably going to be an Explorer. Because then you can just gather a bunch of stuff and whatever main character I'm playing through the game and questing, I really like them to be an Explorer so I can gather the wood logs and the uh, veins for ore and the such. So I got a piece of gear finally, another piece of gloves, wow. I feel like this is my fourth pair of gloves I've gotten from Quest, and this will not be an upgrade. Even the instance gear, the item level 460 or 461 instance gear is not better than the gloves that I got from an early Quest. Now, if I were tanking, it would be a little bit of a different story. So I will take the gloves because I want to save those for cosmetics. Now I just need the chest piece and the boots for the light armor set. Defeating Marum? I think I can do that. Looks like I finally get to go to the Ingmarum place. But that will have to be so... Oh, I thought it wanted me to kill the reindeer for a second. I just see this glowing putrid sludge. Oh, treat fetid pools. Okay. Well, I guess I can start with that. I still have to go west for another quest turn in. What a barricade. Doesn't seem to have done much blocking the warg, though. I mean, he's just running in here without any care. Talk to Klotha. I got her her thing. Apologies in the sky. It worked, it looks like. Except I should have actually read that to make sure it worked. For all I know, this could have ended in a very sad way, and she doesn't like the other guy that was doing that. The the double dwarf. Okay. Back on track. I believe that is... Is this going to be one of those pools? I believe it is. I can go ahead and get it, because it is time to do the outro. So... Time to wrap up the stream has been quite active with questions, which I like. But yeah, in the future for this character, we're getting really close to level 140. So I expect in the next stream that I will get level 140 if all goes to plan. That will be exciting just because I can more comfortably run tier two of the new instance when I get 140 because I can get some level 140 gear. Maybe see if somebody can craft me like a nice shield. Maybe there's some decent crafted jewelry. And even in the meantime, I could get myself some uh, PVMP armor, even if I won't be able to equip it after the update. I can use it in the meantime to help me run tier two to get even better armor. And hopefully we'll get Den of Pugalock on Tuesday next week, which would actually be this week because it's already Sunday and tomorrow's Monday. And speaking of tomorrow, for future content, I plan to have a video tomorrow. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are a channel membership, you could have watched that earlier today. It is something I'm testing, giving members early access to videos, non-time sensitive videos. And basically, if this works, in the future, channel members would be able to watch videos as soon as I upload them. Perhaps even before I have thumbnails, description, title, even before I have all that stuff done. And then when I get all the regular stuff to upload a video done, and depending on content schedule, then it will open up to the public. But yeah, I'm testing that out at least with a single video, but I have an exciting one tomorrow. 
and I hope people like it and find it useful. Uh, otherwise, probably won't stream tomorrow, but I'm currently thinking Tuesday evening, I sh <laughs> I was about to say I should be able to, but I'm also usually busy late Tuesday, and I do expect to be late this Tuesday even. Uh, I actually don't know about Tuesday. Also, that will be patch day, so maybe I'll have a news video on the patch except I don't know what all is coming in this patch besides hopefully Den of Pugalock being reactivated. But yeah, I guess I'll have to think a little bit more about the future content and the future other than the video tomorrow. And then Wednesday evening, that is the day before Thanksgiving, but I believe I should be good to stream then. Yeah, the problem with crafted gear is it takes a lot of sunstone shards, but I have a lot of sunstone shards, but I honestly almost feel like I would be better waiting. There and my other thing. I almost feel like I'd be better waiting and just selling my sunstone shards to get me tons of gold right now. But I think I have 25 of them, which would be enough to craft medium armor and potentially even some jewelry pieces. So yeah. Anyway, as far as this stream goes, with everything we have done, I hope you all have enjoyed it with Cloven Gap questing mostly bug-free-ish, at least getting through the bugs. We have run into bugs, but yeah, getting through them, getting past them, and all that. And if you did enjoy, please consider... wait. Yeah, if you did enjoy the stream, please consider liking and subscribing for more, or becoming a channel member to support the content. And thanks for joining, chatting, and watching, everyone.